Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is a new type of video that I'm going to do every so often that I read a book that I really really like and mainly detective fiction, thrillers, murder mysteries, country house mysteries. So today's book, now it is a book that was published in 1940, I don't read a lot of modern literature unless it's like Anne Cleves or the Inspector Montalbano series or Daisy, Dal Daisy Dalrymple, Ma Maisie Dobbs etc. So today's one is Sad Cypress by the Grand Dame of Murder Mysteries, Agatha Christie, also known as the author who penned such classics as Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. Now I prefer a Hercule Poirot mysteries to Miss Marple, don't get me wrong I do love Miss Marple, I just prefer Hercule Poirot. There's just something about his Belgianness, his continentalness, his just, his no 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 hastings, the little grey cells that uh, does it for me over Miss Marple on her knitting. Though don't get me wrong, I do love knitting, I just like prefer Hercule Poirot. So this book, probably get it in your library or cheap on Amazon or Waterstones, was published in 1940 and it is about, I'll just read it off the back of the book, a beautiful young Eleanor Carlyle who was tried for the murder of Mary Gerard, her rival in love. So there you go, classic murder mystery staple, rivals in love murdering each other. And evidence was damning, everything was pointing towards Eleanor and she had the motive, the opportunity and the means to administer the poison. Always seems to be poison in these classic murder mysteries. Yet, there was one man inside the hostile courtroom, according to this book, that could save her, that could free her and from the hangman's noose, Monsieur Hercule Poirot. More French than Belgian, but I can't really do a Belgian accent. So, what is this a book about? Basically it's murder mystery, Eleanor Carlyle is in trial and it's up to Hercule Poirot to prove that she is innocent, even though the evidence points to her. This was published in 1940, so this would have been just a, probably around the fall of France, Battle of Britain, so this would have been a bit of an escape for people who were directly or indirectly involved with this or the fear of invasion, so a bit of light entertainment, shall we say, for wartime reading. reading. You know me, a little bit of wartimeness. So we started off with Eleanor Carlyle being in the dock, so that's part one and the evidence about, against her. This also about a plate of sandwiches and a woman dying in test as in she didn't write a will and a nurse from New Zealand. So let's start. Part one basically is a lead, the lead up to the event and the murder of Mary Gerard, Eleanor Carlyle. I should warn you, you probably shouldn't watch this video if you haven't read the book, I'm going to, because I don't want to ruin it. And her cousin, Roddy, or Roderick Wellman, go to see their aunt who's had a stroke, Mrs. Laura Wellman, and it's always been known to both these people, Eleanor and Roddy, or Roderick, that they would inherit her fortune, because she's quite a wealthy lady, a wealthy old lady, and they want to get all her money. And subsequently, they are now engaged, and it is later revealed that they only got engaged to be able to get the money from the old lady, as in Mrs. Wellman. But it turns out they don't really care for each other, they're more than good friends. So they go see Mrs. Wellman, she's had a stroke and they leave and then she's had another stroke and they come back and subsequently she dies quite mysteriously overnight. And before this she had said to Eleanor to make a provision in her will, or to make a will, because we don't know at this point she has made a will, to contact her lawyers the next day to make, to make a will, to make a provision for Mary Gerard who had been helping her when she was sick and reading to her and helping the nurses. So there's two nurses, Nurse Hopkins and then Nurse O'Brien, who is an Irish redhead like me. This is a natural. It is implied in the book that she is a natural redhead. But by this and this stage, the other character that we need to introduce is Dr. Lord, who is the attending doctor to Mr. W Mrs. Wellman, and then the busy body housekeeper as well, because they're always a busy body housekeeper in these books. So the scene is set. Mrs. Wellman's dead, find out she has no will and everything goes to Eleanor Carlyle. Roddy goes off to the continent, Croatia, Germany, all these different places and Eleanor gives Mary £2,000 which in 1940 is a lot of money. I'm thinking maybe probably £20,000, quite a lot of money. I'm not quite sure about the money changing from then to now because I'm not great at maths but anyway. Moving on, 
And then there's Mary Gerard's father dies and Nurse Hopkins and her are cleaning out her father's house. And Eleanor invites them up for some sandwiches and tea because they were clearing out the lodge because Mary's father worked on the estate. So they go to the main hall and Eleanor's prepared some sandwiches and Nurse Hopkins goes to make some tea. And then Eleanor asks Nurse Hopkins to help her sort out her aunt's stuff. And they come back and they find El Mary Gerard is dying. And if I, if it's turned out that she died from morphine overdose from that was in sandwiches in paste, in salmon paste. Eleanor is arrested for the murder of Mary Gerard and all the evidence points to her that she was jealous because she was a real love rival between her and Roddy because she really did love Roddy and also she didn't want to give her her money because it turns out Mary Gerard was dun 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 her aunt Laura's natural daughter by a, a guy who died in the first world war oh no but because the man was married and she was a widow she gave the daughter, the child away to her lady's maid to be brought up under her care and she paid for Mary's schooling and finishing abroad in Germany before she came back to England in the late 1930s. So there you go, Eleanor's in trial. All the evidence is pointing towards her. What to do now? Dr. Lord naturally consults his friend, Monsieur Hercule Poirot. Hercule Poirot goes and interviews Nurse Hopkins, Nurse O'Brien, Dr. Peter Lord, all the servants and some of the busybody ladies in the village because they know they love a bit of gossip in, the, in those villages and country house murder mysteries and it turns out that everybody loved Mary Gerard but everybody and some people though some people thought she was sucking up to Mrs Wellman so she should get the money and the money was £200,000 which is probably maybe £2 million, £20 million today again not sure about the monetary difference between 1940 and 2017 and this goes on, interviews go on, and then it actually turns out that the person who killed... I don't, know, don't watch this, you don't want to... Don't want to spoil this great book. Is Nurse Hopkins. She turned out to be Mary Gerard's aunt from New Zealand who had killed people by morphine before in New Zealand. She was a nurse and had to leave the country. And her name was actually Mary Riley because her mother's... Mary Gerard's adopted mother's maiden name was Eliza Riley and Mary Riley was her sister who went to New Zealand to become a nurse. And Nurse Hopkins insisted that Mary Gerard make a uh, will out to her aunt not knowing that Mary Hopkins was actually her aunt. And do you know how she was found out? She said to Eleanor Castle that she pricked herself here where the cuffs of her nursery uniform would be on a rose out of Mary Gerard's adoptive father's lodge where the roses had no thorns. She had actually injected herself with a smaller dose of morphine to make herself sick, to make it look like, and give him, to make it look like she had pricked herself on the rose, and also that made sure that Mary actually died and she got the money. So what did I think of this book? The book is good. Uh, the only problem is towards the end of Agatha Christie's writing of Hercule Poirot mysteries is that Hercule Poirot comes in sort of towards the end or the middle and is not a main character whereas in earlier ones he is the main character as there from the very very start. Um, there is some bits that weren't followed up for example they found German matches outside the window of the pantry where Eleanor made the sandwiches and it is implied that Roddy was looking at her making the sandwiches because he had just been to the continent from Croatia and might have been Germany and that dropped them when he was smoking cigarettes and or Dr. Lord because it was his car was seen outside the back of the house and it could have been him but this was not followed up this was a clue that wasn't followed up so there were some things loose ends that weren't followed up some of the language I understand the 30s 40s language is quite hard to follow sometimes so if you're a modern reader and don't read interwar fiction 1940s 50s fiction some of them might be very old-fashioned you might understand it and I find some of the characters quite stereotypical particularly the Irish nurse and quite offended actually whenever I know it's a book but when the one of the one of the persecuting lawyers asks the nurse oh the Irish have a vivid imagination don't they and she says no I'm just telling you the facts so a lot of stereotypes of Irish people of the upper classes I suppose it was maybe a book that Agatha Christie wrote in a hurry because it was wartime um, but overall, I think it was good. Not one of her stronger murder mysteries, uh, as in my opinion of her Poirot or example. It's just sort of the, the simple, simple sort of a country house murder mystery. You have a love rival, you have a murder, and it turns out that Nurse Hopkins actually murdered a 
Mrs. Wellman, Laura Wellman, Nell Eleanor Castle's aunt, Mary Gerard's natural mother, to so make sure that her daughter would actually get the money. But other than that, and the good plot was for the murder, what the murder weapon, as in the poison, was in the sandwich paste. That was quite funny because around this time there was a lot of poisoning in sandwich paste because like shellfish and stuff. But other than that, I thought it was okay. I would recommend it if you do like Agatha Christie murder mysteries, or you could actually watch the ITV dramatization of this. It's a bit different from the book, but it's still good. So I'd say probably watch the ITV dramatization. I don't say that often enough or very often to watch a night TV or a period drama over a book because I'm always book over book over film but I would recommend reading this and also in the front of the book there is a whole list of books by Agatha Christie that you could read if you didn't like this one so you've got so many to choose from. I hope you've enjoyed this book review. I'm going to do more book reviews whenever I get my hands on some of the Maisie Dog murder mysteries which I am in love with and the Daisy Dalrymple murder mysteries. These are spectacular murder mysteries and it's nice to compare ones actually written in the interwar period and ones written now that are set in the interwar period and how the language corresponds and how it's different. So look, look to my channel for more book reviews in the future. Any sort of modern fiction that you think I might like, thrillers, a and murder mysteries, inspector mysteries, anything like that, police dramas, please link in the box below or follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. I put all the links in the description box below because I'm always up for new suggestions because I'm pretty much in my library every week getting I get the Christie and Spectre Montalban and different things. So they become quite seamy. So do let me know if you have any more recommendations and thanks for watching.